Okay. We're on the north side of the structure. Structure faces west. We've got a stucco finish here. This is our fireplace chimney right in here. And this is stucco finish. I'm still not seeing not seeing a weep. Not, not seeing a weep screed. Moving along, got brick exterior. Continuous soffit vents. Rain gutters are below grade. Moving along. This is electric disconnect. Assuming presumably for the downstairs unit. I didn't get the cover off. We got a little still image inside of here. This unit is five tons. It's R410A. We got a purge coat around the foundation perimeter. That's kind of like a cake frosting, if you will. That's good, it's nice, it's pretty. But it does have voids underneath, behind it, and you know, wood destroying insects such as termites could make their way up in that. It's, it kind of hides things. Back to the condensing unit, this is the data plate. We do have anti-theft Schrader valves. We got a thicker skin refrigerant. I'm not real fond of that, but they've been using it. They've been using it everywhere. So I'm assuming that we got UL listed someplace. It's an assumption on my part. Um, anti-theft Schrader valves again. And they are, at a minimum, they're 14 sear, at a minimum. This is the data plate. When you have wood mulch like this next to the house below the drip edge, that's conducive to wood destroying insects. Everybody has it, I know. I get that. Everybody has it. I got it in my house. My house isn't for sale. Okay. This is the water heater. It's a ream. Well, when they install these, they just bolt them up. If you look right in here, see that red tape right there? That's on a service port. And that service port is so that you can adjust the jets so you can fine tune it. Yes, it'll work. It works fine just bolting it up but the installation isn't complete if they haven't dialed it in so that you get maximum efficiency for you with the pressure that you've got this is the electric service disconnect for the upstairs unit we'll come back we'll come back and put that up this is the electric service receptacle for your air conditioning system. You're supposed to have that over here. GFCI works. We expect everything to work today. We do. But we're going to find out. This is called an expansion, a control joint, if you will. I like control joints. Some people call them expansions. Call it what you will, but this, this is by design. Just like in the street, you'll see the lines in the street. We expect this house to move. This controls the movement, so hopefully you don't get cracks over here. I'll just go ahead. Go ahead. No good deed goes unpunished. That's still got to come back. Electric power service to the house. <laughs> Electric power service to the house. We got du dual grounds right there. That's a good thing. Meter box has been sealed. That's a good thing. Saved by the bell. This is the control wire conduit for your lawn sprinkler system. Good home, this is Bud. Hello. Uh, 
All right. Who knows? Rain gutters discharged below grade. This is your water pressure to the home. We got almost 100 psi. It's way too high. Way too high. It's supposed to be between 40 and 80. 80's max. It's going to cause undue stress on your plumbing system. And this is a PEX plumbing system, if I remember correctly. It's all good. I'm doing video. My client right here. To keep in social distancing. All right. So this is this video is for his benefit. He's gonna watch this tonight, aren't you, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. He's gonna watch. He's gonna watch this video. He's, I'm gonna talk him through it. Yes, sir. That that is called a weep hole. Weep hole. All roofs leak. Home ownership 101. So that will be there like that. All walls leak. Home ownership 101. The idea is they're supposed to divert water faster than they accept it. So what's happening is any vapor gets in the wall, it has a place to escape. Water goes downhill, it has a place to escape. They're replacing the lintel, it's undersized. So what happened to your neighbors? You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Over here, we can't really do a, a water check on the meter, okay? Because the the water's so dirty. I just wanted to see it. I just wanted to see that valve move, but I couldn't. Okay. We'll come back and fix that. I'm gonna fix the water heater. So. What's happening here, and you can't really see, but this is the check valve for the lawn sprinkler system, and uh, that floor should be lined with gravel. Valve. Valve. I can't really see a main shutoff valve for the lawn sprinkler system. The can't find a main shutoff valve for the lawn sprinkler system. Moving on along, we're looking at light fixtures sealed. You see this one right here? See that? You see daylight through there? Daylight through there. It's not. That might have been sealed, but it's not sealed properly. It's not doing the job for which it was intended. There's another one of these weep holes, Jerry. It's a weep hole. It's supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Home ownership 101, all walls leak. We want to divert water faster than they accept it. Yeah, okay. Okay. The there we go. GFCI on the front porch. That's just your natural field. Sometimes you got some that are different. Am I going to be able to walk on that floor they're installing? Yeah, well, on that side, I want to do it. Okay. There's only, they didn't do the whole thing. They just right. did a few pieces of tile up towards the entrance that way, so. Okay. Josh, did you get back? Hear that? I got permission to walk on that floor. Hang on. These are the main shutoff valves. The water going to the house. Uh, excuse me. No, no, no. I'm flustered here. We've got lots of company. These are the clean out valves for the sewer system to the house. Moving on along. Again, the house faces west, I believe. And maybe not. These are called crush cartons. In case you wanted to know. This is the gas service coming into the house. Okay, so it's coming in on the south side of the house. And um, we're, we're looking for gas bonding. 
electrical guest bonding. We haven't seen that yet. And more weep holes by design. You know, the control joint, continuous stuff is there. Moving on along. You see? See this window sill here? See this window sill? See this window sill? See how these window sills are tilted? So water can run off and away from the house. See that gap in there? The gap needs to be sealed. All right, these are tilted. I gotta walk around Jerry here. Got a social distance. So these window sills, they don't have the same amount of pitch. They don't. Let's just look at them for a moment though. They get carried away, I do. Come on. Press home. There we go. There we go. We have enough pitch though. We have enough pitch. Two degrees, that's all we're looking for. Two degrees. It's got minimum pitch. Better pitch is pitch is better over there. I get that. But there's nothing technically wrong with that. Let me go around Jerry again. Okay, this is a little different than next door. On the other side of the house. One, we got water just collecting over here. It's not running off. We've got drains. We got surface drains on both sides of the house. And that water's just sitting there, just ponding. Now a lot of builders will tell you, well, if it's not dry within 48 hours, we consider that a problem. No, if it's not draining, it's a problem today, not 48 hours. I get that. Builders say that all the time. No, it's got to drain today, not, not in two days when it evaporates naturally. There's that gap I was talking about. Unlike the other one, this is supposed to be closer between six and three inches to the ground. And that's, that's 12 inches. It's higher than six inches for darn sure. Coming on along here, that's that same gas valve. Second verse, same as the first. This one's a little better, a little better to look at. I'm not seeing any weep screed. No weep screed. Saved by the bell. Good home, this is Bud. Okay, sales calls, yay, howdy. All right, now, right here, see that right there? That's called a weir trap, a little weir trap. All right, they don't cost very much, but you see right here, we're missing our weir trap. It costs about a buck a piece. All right, some people call them de menace, minutia. Wind will blow through that and make your windows whistle. Have them, have them. There's another clean out. Parge coat. I thought we had a gate over here. All right, we're gonna have two exterior videos. That's fine. That's fine, give me a chance to put some of this stuff back. This is where I'll be looking at the roof. One of the places maybe. We got ridge vents, soft vents, continuous soft vents vents can you see the deflection in that roof covering it's pretty normal i hate to call it that i do pretty normal it's called something it's not radically wrong but um you know all roofs are going to have that unfortunately Today's current acceptable construction practices. Coming along here. All right. Here's another one. It's probably in the other report. I gotta look at every inspection as if it was a new inspection though. Cause you don't know, I might've missed something. So it gives me another chance. But right there, a little metal between the shingles 
and the fascia. Okay, a little gap right there, that's where the materials lapped. In Corning, their manufacturer specifications, they say that that should be a minimum of 10 inches. So there's that. You're not going to have an issue with it. You're not going to have an issue with it. But that's what it says on the installation instructions. So there I am. That right there, that vent, that's a fresh air induction vent. This is a tight house. And a tight house means that it doesn't get a lot of air from outside. We're, we're trying to prevent the exchange of air coming through the fenestrations and, and stuff. So that brings fresh, clean air into your home so that you don't develop sick house syndrome. Now, in some parts of the country, screens are not allowed on these. Screens are not allowed on them because they could freeze over and then it'd starve your furnace on the coldest night of the year. But we don't have that problem here. Here we've got a problem with birds. So that keeps the birds out. And so as, again, in some parts of the country that might be considered uh, an issue, but today it's actually a, a, a benefit.